Okay, so I, I just prepared a little introduction for us, for people that uh, don't know you and me and uh, the context. Mm -hmm. So guys, uh, <laughs> Andrew and I uh, met at Dr. Joe Dispenza's events in San Diego. Uh, so it was in April 2022. And I was so amazed by his beautiful energy that was so <laughs> contagious. Oh, man. I, re I remember you were dancing like, like that. <laughs> that Saturday night after the coherent ceiling. Yeah, I remember that. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm so glad that we're here now because, like, we were talking about this project to do a video together. Um, so, so cool. So cool to be here. And, um, yeah, so for people who don't know Dr. Joe, um, he teaches the science behind meditation. So, the reason why it's so powerful um, is because the more you understand what you're learning, the more you put meaning on what you do, and the more it's going to be impactful, right? Mm -hmm. um, so during these events, during this week, we are studying, we are meditating, uh, we are altering higher states of consciousness uh, to reclaim our capacity for love and joy within ourselves and uh, with others. Uh, so my intention for this call together is to share about the power of manifestation huh. and share Andrew's story of transformation that is so inspiring. So um, how can we start this? Can you just maybe uh, tell me a little bit about you? Like, who are you, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. So let's go back to 2019 because that I think that's whenever I first started getting into like the spiritual stuff. This is like right after I graduated high school, didn't really know where I wanted to go, where I wanted to do. I've seen a lot of my friends like go to college and doing things that they uh, are like going after the future and I didn't really have anything else to do. And then next thing you know, I remember I was just laying on my bed and literally just looking up in the ceiling and just remember thinking to myself like, man, there has to be more to life than just what I'm currently doing. And then I just got like this download, this insight to talk to someone and this download was a name and her name is Cheyenne. If you guys don't know who Cheyenne is, it's my cousin. She's like a psychic medium. And for some reason, I was just thinking to myself like, okay, like I have to, this must be a sign. And so I go on her Instagram account and I just see like these whole bunch of like videos on spirituality. I was like, what is this stuff? Next thing you know, I'm clicking on different uh, posts that she had posted. And I would read her like little, it was like an essay, but you know, the little caption thing or whatever. And I was like, gosh like this resonates with me so deeply why is it inspiring me like it's so healing and then I would scroll down watch your videos and next thing you know I literally come across like spiritual awakening seven chakras I was like what is this shit so <laughs> I go ahead and click on this and I was like oh my gosh like this resonates with me so deeply and so I hit her up and then next thing you know she offers me like hey Andrew you should try out meditation and at first I kind of judged it because I was like isn't meditation for like months and get, don't get me wrong, this was like back in 2019. I just got out of high school and I just didn't know anything about this stuff. And so- How old are you, Andrew? Huh? Just, how old are you? I'm 22. Okay. Yeah, I'm 22. It's yes. pretty crazy. And so yeah. <laughs> uh, at first I was just thinking to myself like, dang, meditation, I've done that for months. And then next thing you know, I had like this other thought come in instead, like it's a good time to like do some self-reflecting. And next thing you know, I was like, you know what? Let me go into it. And so I looked up some questions on Google and then after I looked up the questions, like, who am I? How am I feeling right now? I went straight to my meditation. And the first the first question I asked, like, who am I? I was, like, a bit impatient. So I threw that off. And I went to the second question, like, how am I feeling right now in this moment? And I tuned into my heart. And I could feel, like, this tremendous sadness. And next thing you know, like, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I'm sad. Like, I, I never realized how sad I was. And for the first, like, two weeks of August, I was, like, doing this inner work. And I was just, like, feeling you super euphoric super joyful and I had like a profound mystical experience that like changed my life forever where I like shot out from my body went to outer space and I was like met with this divine presence I've never experienced before what? I remember saying like oh, I don't want to let this go I don't let this go and a voice came to me and it said take this feeling with you and it pushed me back down to planet earth back to the clouds and back into my chair and when I opened my eyes I had like this majestic presence and I was like what is this stuff right and so that lasted for a few days. And then I kind of lost the feeling. And then like months later, around like 2019 of November, that's when I found Dr. Joe, like he was on YouTube. Next thing you know, Dr. Joe talks about like 
when you go to the field, you create, you, when you go to the field, you take a piece back with you. And I made the instant connection. Oh, that's what I did. And ever since then, I've been doing Dr. Joe's work since 2019. So yeah, 2019. pretty crazy. Yeah. Did, did, you do, did you do it every single day, the meditations? No, I didn't do it. I was kind of on and off with it. Uh, I was listening to other YouTubers. Like, uh, I don't know if you know Aaron Apke or or Aaron Dowdy. They're all like spiritual Aaron YouTubers. Dowdy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like listen to those because that's actually Aaron Dowdy's the meditation where I like left my body, went to outer space. That was his meditation that I did. Oh, wow. It wasn't, it wasn't Dr. Joe's. But um, yeah, I was doing that. And I think I guess I didn't get really get serious with it until like 2020, I believe. Yeah, because I started the good morning and evening meditations. And then after that, somewhere around like 2020, Dr. Joe dropped like the synchronizing your energy meditation series. Mm -hmm. And when I started doing that, everything just completely changed. And I started going from Texas to South Carolina to San Diego and all this good stuff. So, yeah. Wow. But pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And um, so your first Dr. Joe's event was in San Diego, right? Yeah, 2022 San Diego. So how were you guided to go there? Oh my God, this is so crazy. <laughs> okay, so um, I remember 2022, I remember thinking to myself that, oh, this is the year that I'm gonna go to a Dr. Joe event. I'm ready for this. And I was looking through his like events list on his uh, website. And I was just thinking like, oh, he has one in uh, Marco Island, Cancun, San Diego, Niagara Falls, Orlando. And then I see Texas. I was like, oh, it's closer to my house. I'll go to that one. Next thing you know, comes March and literally I cannot I, I it started off with like my friends going to San Diego and I was like oh okay I know Dr. Joe's doing an event down there and then next thing you know I'm reading books on like uh, on a random page and it'll say San Diego and then I would watch Dr. Joe's online course and he would mention San Diego on like the tuning into new potentials course or the progressive workshop and yeah. I was like okay like the synchronicities are kind of adding up and like speaking up to me and then there's this there's two big signs that like really spoke to me and the first sign was whenever I was at work and I was working at like the register area and I see this lady come up and on her shirt it said San Diego and I was thinking like oh, shit like <laughs> that's a sign right there it's and calling then, you yeah I know I literally was like oh fuck all right so and then next thing you know I go to my mom's house because I was currently I was living in South Carolina and I was living with my grandpa at the time and I would go to my mom's house to go eat or whatever and then Next thing you know, my sister and my stepdad, they would talk something about California. And then I overheard them say San Diego. And then I was just like, all right, San Diego's like, that's where I have to be right now. And then next thing you know, I was like, all right, if, if I'm really supposed to go to San Diego, the universe will align everything because I didn't have the money to go. I didn't have the roommate. I didn't even know, like, stepping out into San Diego was like a huge, huge, like, stepping out to the unknown, right? And next thing you know, everything just started lining up for me. Like, my brother gave me his credit card because I helped him pay off his credit card. He's like, hey, if you want to go to this band, I got you. I was like, there's no fucking way. And then there, yeah. there I am in San Diego. Yeah. Wow. Started off with those small synchronicities, you know? Yeah. But like, yeah. I really love the fact that you were already listening to those signs, you know, and just yeah. following them and like go to San Diego according to the sign that you received. So it's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty crazy because I... I I wanted to ignore it, but at the same time, it just kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, yeah. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. I was like, all right, that's whatever. Whatever happens, whatever happens, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So it's from, okay. So it's from 2019 that your life started to change when you started your spiritual path, right? Yeah, 2019. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And crazy. Uh, yeah. And from the, did your life change? after san diego more i mean i so it's pretty what interesting happened? yeah yeah so like i so for all your your audience i bought a one-way ticket to san diego to see if i can create something out of nothing and i was able to do that i have a whole youtube and like it, it, i document the whole journey there and while i was like in san diego i had like all these cool experiences where i like had my first chiropractic done for free my first breath work class for free, my first acupuncture for free, my first cupping, you know, like those little suckers on the yeah. back, that for free. And I was just thinking like, oh, just cool experience or whatever. I met a whole bunch of Dr. Joe Dispenza students as well. But during my stay in San Diego, I noticed that, uh, I think it was around June because I, I ended up buying one would take there. It was like April 20, 
25th to May 1st, right? Whenever San Diego yeah. happened, right? Okay, so yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so in June, I remember thinking to myself, like, that's it. Like, that's that's all I have to, like, get or whatever. Like, this is all, like, the universe is offering me. I just remember thinking to myself, like, oh, man, this is, like, this is not, yeah. Sorry, that's my baby brother. Of course, like, no worries at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, oh, my gosh. I don't even know what to do. But anyways, it's, like, you got to, like, Oh, Come say hi. Come say hi. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yes. Uh, we're What's up? Say hi, Jay. Hi, Hello. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. Don't this be sorry. That's that's so cool. I love yeah. it. Of but yeah, course. that was super that's unexpected. Right? Yeah, that was super. Unexpected. You don't need to be perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect that way. Yeah. So. What were we talking about again? Sorry, my fault. Um, so, 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 so. Uh... <laughs> I think we were talking about like San Diego and oh, yeah. how. Okay, so I bought a one-way ticket to San Diego and I had all these cool experiences and stuff. But at the same time, around June, I literally had like these um, these blocks that would come up. The universe mm. was just like, like, hey, Andrew, like I'm trying to show you that like, hey, you're addicted to what other, like you're addicted to your external environment because you know how the theme name for san diego is like rehab it yeah. and i was thinking like i was thinking to myself like why was i even called to like the event if i didn't have like any of those mystical experiences i wanted right and so san diego comes and oh, wait, june comes and i just remember thinking to myself like okay like why was i even brought here next thing you know i remember the universe was just showing me signs like hey you're like you've been like social conditioned to care what other people think you're putting your self-worth on what other people think and I was just thinking like, oh my gosh, like I'm addicted to, like I'm addicted to what other people think about me. I give my power away to what other people like think and say about me or whatever. And so I was just like, okay, like this is what I need to do. I need to like really recondition my body into a new mind. That's the meditation I was doing. And I just remember like my whole life, I guess it sort of, it started to change after I like became aware of that. Because as soon as I started doing that meditation, reconditioning your body to a new mind. I ended up going back to Texas around uh, June, the end of June. And then like, I didn't stay there that long because I was already getting signs to go to Colorado. And I was just thinking to myself like, okay, Colorado is just like a huge one that I don't know what's going to happen because I know that Dr. Joe was going to do like a youth retreat there. And next thing you know, um, he ended up canceling it. But the people who already bought like their airplane tickets were just like, screw it. Let's just get our own Airbnb and just throw like a little Dr. Joe Dispenza event there. And so yeah. that's what we ended up doing. And next thing you know, I ended up meeting someone who gave me an opportunity to stay in, stay in like Colorado. And I was like, dude, there's just no fucking way this is happening because I was seeing signs right at, as soon as I left, uh, as soon as I left San Diego that like, hey, you're going to go to Colorado. You're going to live in Colorado. You're going to buy one way ticket to Colorado. And I was just thinking like, dude, there's, I'm not going to do anything for four days there, you know? And so the universe was just trying to mm. nudge me up, letting me know like, hey, Gotta wake up, Andrew. We're trying to get you going on this adventure. So I guess in a sense that um yeah, I guess I guess like my life has changed because like now that I would reread or relearn the material that Dr. Joe has, like on his progressive and an intensive workshop, it just started changing because things started to click in my brain like how it didn't before. And so I think that after you go to a week long, for me personally, like you start to see things and you start to like create like a new way your brain your brain starts to get rewired in a sense you know oh, yeah. so yeah mm. yeah and, um can you tell us uh all of the things that you have manifested and that sh that were that came to you in this 3d reality mm, yeah i could tell you the one the recent one that just happened that just blew me away so like I said, I was living in Colorado from like July 22nd all the way to September 25th. This was like the biggest manifestation I have ever created in my entire life. So um, I was getting signs from whenever I was living in Colorado to go back to Texas, go back to Texas. Like as soon as I like made the decision to stay there and I completely ignored it, but the signs were getting bigger and bigger. And so we fast forward to September 25th where I had like this crazy vivid dream that someone bought me an event ticket in the Dallas week long because Dr. Joe was doing a, a week long in Dallas in like October 1st to the October 7th. 
and I just we had like saw a... each other by the way guys we saw each other and we didn't know that we <laughs> I found him in a parking lot <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that shit was so random bro and bro and you told me that Dr. Joe was behind me was that for real dude was he yeah, for real? So, yeah yeah so we were doing the walking meditation in the morning uh-huh. and then I wake up and I see this guy I was like is this Andrew and behind him is this Dr. Joe with Andrew <laughs> Fuck up, dude. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. Cause I remember that that was like the first walking meditation we did. And I don't know why. Like whenever I was just standing there, I was just bawling my eyes out. Like I was just thinking about my dad. And I was like, why is my dad coming up? But mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't care. But I just started bawling my eyes out. And I think Dr. Joe was just like gave me that little nudge, you know? But yeah. Oh, but yeah, man. back to the back to the story. Um uh so September 25th, I had that vivid dream that someone bought me an event ticket to go to the Dallas week long. And I woke up that dream, like just feeling like super in awe. And I just knew something was going to happen. And so I jumped into my meditation that morning. And in the middle of my meditation, I get a phone call from a friend that lived in Colorado, but he's actually from Fort Worth. So he calls me and I'm looking at my phone to see if I want to answer or not. Cause I'm like, why are you calling me during my meditation, right? Like that's so disrespectful. What the heck is going on, right? <laughs> and so, and so, I get this. I, I I was debating to see if I can if I should answer the phone, right? And then literally, I have this thought come down into my head, and it said, "This is your opportunity to go back down to Texas." And I was like, "Oh shit!" So I answered. I was like, "Hey, what's going on, bro?" And it was like, Andrew, like I was just brushing my teeth, and this thought about you just came into my awareness, and I just had to call you. And he was asking me like, "Hey, are you still interested in doing solar?" And I was just like. Uh, I'm not currently interested in doing solar at the moment, bro, but I need to ask you like a weird and a weird question. Like, are you going back to Texas anytime soon? He's like, oh, that sucks, Andrew, but I'm not going to Texas until like October 1st. And I was just thinking like, damn, bro, like I need to get to Texas ASAP. And he goes, well, Andrew, like I can't take you to Texas, but I know someone who's going to Texas that exact day when you ha- when, whenever I had the dream. And I was thinking like, dude, give me his number. I'll talk to him. He's like, don't worry, I got you. I'll send you his number, everything like that. So he gives me the number. I talked to the guy. The guy was just so cool, so chill. So I asked him, like, hey, do you can you, is there any way you can give me a ride to Texas? And he's like, bro, I got you, but there's like a lot of stuff in my car. And so we're gonna have to make some room. And I was like, all right, sweet. And so that exact day where I had that vivid dream that someone bought me an event ticket, which was on the September 25th, the, the call came in and I get a ride from Colorado all the way back to Texas. And I arrived in Texas on Monday morning. So that shit happened. And I, I'm calling my friends. I'm letting them know, like, hey, dude, I'm in Texas right now. I feel like I'm supposed to go to this Dr. Joe Dispenza event that's happening in a few days. And then my friend, he just came back from Niagara Falls and he was just like telling me about like tuning into new potentials. And I was just like, okay, that's the meditation I need to be doing. So next thing you know, I'm doing tuning into new potentials. Uh, my first potential was to uh, manifest the event ticket. I don't know how the money was going to come in. I, I just didn't have any money for this. That's the craziest part, like zero money. Right. And the second potential was to share my testimonial. And next thing you know, uh, I fast forward. Cause I, I came back home on Monday, started doing the meditations like Monday or Tuesday, somewhere around there. And then Friday comes and I kid you not, like I have this like intuition letting me know, like, Hey, go to the event and just walk around, go out into the unknown. And so I got my, cause my dad only lives 30 minutes away from the event. And so I take the car, drive all the way to the uh, the convention center and I'm just walking around and I see people and I, I smile at this one lady and then I go around and I see like people who are like, I've, I've been inspired by their testimonial. Her name's Elle, but she's such a beautiful soul. And, and I remember I was talking to her and she was, I was telling her like, you manifested like your your new husband, correct? She's like, yeah, he's right here. And I was like, there's no fucking, like I was just blown away, right? Wow. And next thing you know, um, we we like, we go to the ballroom, we're checking things out. I go back downstairs and I don't know if you guys remember, but I, I, I said, like I smiled at this one woman. That same woman, I see her downstairs again. And I just, I don't know why, I just opened up to her and her, her name's Nikki. And I just opened up to her. I was like, hey, are you going to uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's event? And she was like, yes, like I am here for this. Like, and then we just started conversating. I was like, is this your first event? She's like, no, this is my fourth event. And we're just, I was just telling her about my dream, about how I had like this vivid dream about how I got, um, like how I came to Colorado all the way to Texas. And she was just saying like, hey, Andrew, like, I want you to meet my husband. I'll take you to our room. We can eat there. We want some Star Wars, whatever, right? So she takes me to her room. I meet her husband. We're connecting really well. 
And I'm just telling them about like the story about like how I've been like had this bit or this dream and I've been called here, right? And I kid you not, like 1030 comes and she's like, hey, Andrew, like I cannot wait to see you tomorrow morning. I really hope you get in. That it a uh, case closed. I go back home around like 1030, like I said, and I don't go to sleep to like really late at night doing my meditation. And I had like this, this strong knowing that, hey, Andrew, everything that you've been working for, everything's OK. You just need to surrender and just completely let go. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wake up the next morning, I get a text call from Nixie, Nikki. She's like, hey, Andrew, are you up right now? Do you think I can call you? I was all like, I just woke up and I was like, yeah, I'm cool. Like, yeah, go ahead and give me a call. And she calls me. She's like, hey, Andrew, how are you doing? I was like, I'm doing great. I'm super excited for today. And, I, and she goes like, hey, has your miracle happened yet? I was like, no, not yet. But I feel like I have a spot here. She's like, good, because I'm buying your ticket. And I was just like, no fucking way. She just said, I was like, wait, say that again. Like, I, 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 didn't, quite hear you. I, I didn't quite hear you. She's like, Andrew, I was just talking to the Cephalon team. Just come meet us at the registration and everything will be taken care of. And I was just thinking like, dude, there's no <laughs> fucking way that shit happened, right? Uh, like who, Whoa. like who, like someone who, you guys know that Dr. Joe's event ticket is like $2,300, yeah. which is kind of like, kind of pricey, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, like, there's just no way like someone would pay that much amount of money on another person. But, you know, Dr. Kim, Dr. Joe's community is so different. They're just so loving, so caring, so and just loving. so euphoric. Yeah. yeah. So crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, um. The reason why Nikki, uh, she tells me the story why she ended up buying me the ticket because before she left Austin, she was saying that she was listening to this one YouTuber who was basically telling like, telling her like, hey, like you guys, we should support the youth. The youth needs to know that they don't need to be living in stress or living in survival. And they can like, we should teach them that manifestation can happen instantly. And so she was all like, oh, I want to support the youth. That's where my, my focus is. And she was like meditating on this and she was saying like, hey, should I, should I like, should I buy Andrew this ticket? And like her heart was just saying like, yes, like do this for Andrew, do this for Andrew. And she's like, all right, I'm doing it. I'm, next thing you know, she buys me the ticket and she tells me the funny synchronicity story about it too. Cause on her way from Austin to Dallas, she was listening to this guy named Andrew Huberman. He's like a neuroscientist guy or whatever. He's pretty, pretty big on YouTube or on, on social media. And basically, while she was listening to this guy, she was just like, for some reason, I'm I feel like I'm supposed to meet a guy named Andrew. And next thing you know, I come up, I introduce, my, introduce myself to my, I introduce myself to her. And I was like, hey, my name's Andrew. And she's like, oh, this is the guy I'm supposed to meet. This is Andrew. And then next thing you know, yeah. boom. Crazy, right? Wow. Yeah. What a story, man. That is crazy, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what just comes to me right now is that an interesting point because you know dr joe's teachings are about like meditating and manifesting what you want and he yeah, talks yeah. about it's coming in the way that you least expect yeah. but like this happened for you but at the same time before it, before it, it came you just you decided to listen the sign to listen to the signs as well so you were like, okay, like I'm listening to this sign and then I'm going to Texas. You were kind of looking for it, but still mm -hmm. believing in it that you were yeah. going to receive it, right? You're going to have the, the this ticket. So it's like you're looking for it, but like, yeah, because you were not like, were you in, in, in Colorado bef before the, the event? Uh, I was in Colorado, yeah, before the event. Yeah, you you were like you were in Colorado, just waiting for the ticket to come to you, right? You just like. I mean, I was trying to ignore it because I I didn't really have any money to go. I was just like, there's just no way I'm gonna go because I just I just don't have the money. There's just no way it's gonna come in. But um, I was doing my meditations every single day. I was doing different variations of meditations, mm -hmm. and when I had that vivid dream, it was just like a knowing, like, hey, something's gonna happen. But in a sense that you just said that, you know, I was kind of looking for it. I think that in some sense, yeah, I, I kind of was. I was like kind of in that lack or in that in that state of just trying to look, look, look instead of being in that state, right? Yeah. Uh, I, there's, there's parts of me that was like definitely looking for sure. But at the same time, I just remember hearing Dr. Joe saying like, hey, um, if like you brought the experience to you and you literally got to like step out into the unknown and meet it halfway, right? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah, pretty interesting too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, looking, I wouldn't say looking, but like you just follow your inner voice. This is so right. powerful, man. Yeah. Like you trusted your inner voice so much that your inner voice, your intuition guided you to this place where you received the ticket, right? Mm -hmm, for sure. And it's like, it's so crazy because like how you build relationship with anything, like with money, with people, like you can build a relationship with like this inner voice and it will literally guide you to places that you've never experienced before. Yeah. And it will take you to places that you've really never been before. And you really got to trust that. And you really got to build that, that strong. Yeah, like it's yeah, crazy. You believe. Yeah, amen. Sure. Yeah, I received this uh, very, very, very strong intuition when I was in Dallas that I should go to Sedona this week. Sedona? And, yeah, in Arizona. And yeah, yeah. I kept having this intuition, these dreams. And I was like, I want to go. But like when I was awake in this 3D reality, I had those thoughts coming to me. Oh, no, like you just went to this event you made some expenses so you you won't go there like a week after enjoying and you need to work and blah blah blah, 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 blah. so yeah, that yeah. i had these thoughts in this 3d reality that like blocked me to go there mm. but i now after this conversation i know that if i would have followed this inner voice but yeah. my inner voice said something is waiting for you there um, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, because what you seek is seeking you at the end of the day. And don't even worry about the money. Don't even worry about like where you're going to stay, where you're going to eat. Like everything will be taken care of. Like oh, yeah. after trusting my intuition and like following the synchronicities, like I would always worry about like, oh, I'm going to stay, I'm running low on money. This is not going to work. But whenever mm -hmm. you like commit to your meditations and have like that vision of the future of what you want to create and yeah. focus on that and make that like the biggest, the greatest that make that vision the greatest uh, thing in your mind and you overcome your external environment, it just, it's a whole different game. Cause you, that's how you build like a self love in a sense, right? Cause you're mm -hmm. trusting in that voice. And mm -hmm. yeah, like, don't be worried about it. I, I had no money to go to both of the events and everything just worked out. The roommate, the food, the place to stay, the, the money, everything just came in the right timing. And so if for anybody that wants to do crazy shit like this, I highly recommend it with the intention to like really build that uh, that relationship with your intuition so yeah yeah, yeah. 100 percent yeah oh yeah wow <laughs> oh wow crazy story yeah, it's yeah. Fucking i agree totally i had it just reminds me of my story for san diego mm -hmm. um i'm not here to tell my story but it's gonna take 30 seconds but oh, like no. in san you diego <laughs> in san diego um same i just i was just like i don't have any money so let's take let's take it on my credit card right and uh when a week uh, a month after i just received the same amount from my taxes received back the same amount i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> oh that's badass <laughs> it was like yeah you just have to to ask for it right that's it yeah With your heart. Shall we see yeah i am in so you talked about uh that you've been manifesting your soul tribe so how did that happen so this is so interesting this this was back whenever i left san diego to uh to go to colorado or to back to texas but while i was in in san diego i was creating my own mind movie about like how i wanted to experience certain specific things and one of the specific things I wanted to meet was my soul tribe. Can you just and explain so, what is what is a mind movie? Yeah, basically a mind movie is just a, another form of a vision board, but you watch the mind movie literally on your phone. So you can have like different pictures or videos of what you want to experience. Like you want to move to Bali or you want to uh, go travel the world or you want to make a lot of financial abundance or you want to create a relationship or you want to have mystical experience like you could put all that thing into like a mind movie small clips and then what you do is you have like one of like your favorite inspiring songs and you basically put yourself in trance to uh really experience those things which is super powerful because a lot of the things that i put on my mind movie my movie it came to reality which mm. is pretty fucking badass and yes. so yeah i put my mind i put my soul tribe on my mind movie and then next thing you know, uh, Dr. Joe 
ends up doing the youth thing or whatever, like the youth event, but he ended up canceling it. And so the youth group ended up getting together. And I was thinking like, dude, these are like my people, like, like people who want to do shit, who want to be together. And I'm just thinking like, this is my soul tribe. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, I, I end up going to Colorado. I meet these people and like these people are the most extraordinary initiates ever. Like they, they're being initiated into something greater. Like they all have, we all have like the same values our same goals, how we want to impact education, well, how we want to teach abundance, how we want to do all these amazing things like health technology. And it's such a beautiful thing. And I just realized like, these are the people I want to be around. Having been surrounded with like, like-minded individuals that, that want to make a difference, that want to change the world for the better. And I, I, I love these guys, they're just amazing. And we do coherence healings together, the youth group does. And it's just like, I had some break, breakthrough moments for me where it was just unbelievable. So yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. so happy for you that you found your soul tribe. It's yeah. so important to be surrounded by people that pull you, put each other to the top that are prison for you. Yeah. That have goals, goals, the same goals. Like, wow, so powerful. Because yeah, I think that it just accelerates everything, right? Mm -hmm. It really does. And I think that I think that you will meet different people on different stages. So I'm pretty sure like not all my soul tribe came together because I think that we're still on the evolution of growth and spiritual growth and like the right people and the right people or the right people in the right place will come at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like it's dead, bro. I was trying to get in this flow state, but yeah, basically, yeah. You get what I mean, you know? Yeah, of course, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's a new slapper. But yeah. <laughs> oh yes that's about it mm -hmm. mm. and uh, so from what I understood you're just like living your life that way right just following synchronicities yeah just... I think yeah I think that I, I just don't want to go anywhere that I don't feel called to I feel like building a life just based on synchronicity and just trusting <laughs> the unknown is just how I want to live my life in the moment uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to change in six months or whenever it's supposed to change but as of right now, that's where I'm, I'm just going with the synchronicities, you know, I'm letting that guide my life. And uh, it's been so good so far. And I just believe that, you know, when you follow those synchronicities, it's just that you trust in yourself. And when you trust in yourself, you trust in possibility. And when you trust in possibility, you trust in the divine. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. So beautiful. I feel mm -hmm. I'm at the same place right now, you know, just like um, navigating through synchronicities as well because i feel yeah. like i'm in this period a time of transition you know between the old me and the new me and i'm like to go to the new me i just need to follow what comes to me you know like follow the synchronicities and to go there so i'm just trusting yeah. as well yeah just trust trust yeah like I, I still have that you know that mindset to get this shit done i know that i want to go to bali i've been getting signs to go to bali Mm. And I'm just going to trust in the process that like, hey, this is going to align beautifully. I just know that whenever Bali calls out to you, just know it. Mother, Mother Nature is like ready for you, basically. So, oh, yes. so yeah. Yeah. So I think we're just done. And um, is there um, any moments where for you that were very difficult and that you started to lose like sense of trust and how did you overcome it? Yeah, for sure. So um, back in 2020, whenever I was doing the synchronizing your energy to a new life, that's whenever like my life started shifting with Dr. Joe's work. So by that, at that time, it was like around November when I started doing that meditation. And I get a phone call from my mom letting me know like, hey, Andrew, we're coming down to Texas. And I was curious to know, like, do you want to come stay in South Carolina with us? And I was just thinking like oh, out of the blue. So I was just like, yeah, mom, I feel like I, I feel like like stepping out into the unknown and just going out there, just doing whatever. It's it sounds like a good idea. And so I ended up going with my mom to South Carolina and I've been seeing signs like like as soon as I got to South Carolina, I see this church that said new life and I would see this building that said new life and I'll be on YouTube new life. I'm like, this is my <laughs> new life, I guess. Right. And during during from 2020 all the way to 2021, I think there was like two years maybe a year I don't even know I don't really care but um during that time like nothing was happening I was doing the meditations every day four or five hours a day just like trying to like hone the skill down yeah like and I I noticed that like during those moments I had like a lot of self-doubt in myself in the work and I was just thinking like 
I'm doing this for a year and nothing's happening. And I think that what helped me progress even doing the meditations is actually listening to Dr. Joe on YouTube, his testimonials, uh, hearing other people's experiences on YouTube. I think that really helped like remember like, hey, this is, where, this is where you're going. Why are you doing this for? The reason why I was doing like the meditations was because of that mystical experience I had back in 2019. In mm -hmm. August, I was just like, oh, that's all I ever wanted. That, that changed my life so much. And I just want to connect to that divine intelligence. And next thing you know, I'm doing the meditations and I'm going against self-doubt, judgment, entitlement, frustration, anger, all these, all these survival stress emotions. And what there were moments where I was just like, fuck this, I don't want to do this no more. And then I would just sit back in my bed, just think like, I put so much work into all this and just to quit now. And I just remember just, right, just getting up and just going at it differently. Literally like you have to go at these meditations so differently. Like you want to be more playful. You want to have more fun with it. You want to be more compassionate, huge one. Being compassionate to yourself, doing like these meditations is just so crucial because there are moments where I was just so like master mode, get it done, get it done. Do get master finding the present over and over again. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. But I never really added the the quality of being compassionate and being kind to myself. And I was just so entitled because I was thinking like, I've been doing the work for two years and I should be having my mystical experience already. Why isn't this happening? You know, just all these, that's what I need to overcome. Dr. Joe would always say like that thought, whatever you have in your mind, that's what you need to overcome. And it was challenging because it was just so, it was like a gap, you know? I don't know if you read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, but on chapter seven, he talks about the gap where how you appear to be to the world and how you really feel down here. It was just like so out of alignment. I was just so out of integrity because I was doing, I was just trying to like show everyone like, hey, this is like how I'm doing it. And then like real down, I'm just like, this shit sucks. I don't want to deal with this shit, you know? And it just, it was just like this huge gap that had to overcome a layer by layer by layer. And eventually like, it was like the universe had put me on a, a, what is it called? Um, What is it? A a slingshot. It put me on a slingshot and pulled mm -hmm. me back all the way back. And then once like 22 hit, started flying. But during those moments of like really in like the fire, the where you're really crossing the river of change, there you want to learn how to be more compassionate, be more kind, have more fun, be more playful, because I didn't really have it like that. I was just trying to be like, I want to get this done. I want the mystical experience. And Dr. Joe always talks about like, hey, it's all about executing. It's not about going after mystical and not getting after the, the yeah. relationship or whatever, the abundance. It's about executing in the moment. And that's what I really never did. I was just trying to get, it was just another routine. And so be more present with it, have more fun, have more compassion towards it and be more kind is the best advice that I could give to anyone who's doing this work. Mm, so, wow. So you had a lot of expectation. So yeah. you were like considering as a, meditation as a like a to do i have to, yeah. i have to do it and yeah. then expecting something so what changed for you is that you just started to change your perception of meditation and say oh now i'm gonna do it for myself as a proof of love for myself right in a sense yeah like i i started being more compassionate i felt like i was going at it a little bit too hard mm -hmm. um you know and and yeah in a sense like i, I had to do it for Cause I, I just completely surrender. I was like, what, whatever the fuck happens, happens. I didn't really care about it anymore. And I was just thinking like, all right, let me just be more kind to myself. And so, yeah, it was hard. Cause like growing up, I always played sports, played football, ran track, played volleyball, soccer, all these sports. And these are like very competitive sports. Nothing wrong with it. I think at the time, but I guess that it just didn't serve in, in where I, I'm trying to go in my life. And Maybe, maybe, I don't know if that's true. Maybe it's just that I need to play around with it a little more. And that's what I'm still doing is being more e experimental with it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And um, did you have, okay, let's talk about like your family or friends. Like what, mm. what do they think about it? Like the fact that you are living your life that way, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, my parents, think, my mom at least thinks I'm a cult. Uh, what else? My parents, I don't, I don't think they really support what I do because they just don't see that it has any benefits to it. However, 
Um, I just know that I just got to keep showing up for myself. And eventually, like, what's going to happen is that either they, I change myself so much that they want to also change with me. Or sometimes it's going to be the other one where they just fall out from my life. And I just go create a new, new, new way of being, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah, like, it's definitely challenging because I lost a lot of friends doing this work. Like everyone just spiraled out of my life. And I was just thinking like, damn, that that kind of sucks. But at the same time, I, my, my, my goal was to go after the school. Like I wanted that no matter what. And I was going to do whatever I could to get there. And the only way to get there is by surrendering and just having fun and being playful. And so, yeah, when you start doing this work, there's going to be certain people that fall out to your fall out of your life. Mm-hmm. But just know that it's just room for more people to come in like you and then how I met Pat and how I met other people. It's just like, mm-hmm. this is a whole nother world and it's just a beautiful thing. So oh, just keeps, yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. Sure. Wow, so beautiful. Just like keeping believing in yourself and the yeah. universe is just rewarding you after that. Yeah, it's like what you practice in private is what you get rewarded for in public, right? Mm-hmm. In a sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And do you have any, did you connect with any life mission or purpose during yeah. these last years? Life mission. I mean, uh, I, I don't, uh, um, probably not at the moment. I know that I just started YouTubing or just YouTubing. I just started <laughs> doing YouTube and I just want to make that a platform where I can build a community that inspires other people to like really step out into the unknown and trust in the synchronous. That's like, I guess that's sort of like where I want to go with my life. But at the same time, it's just like, I, I need to still focus on Dr. Joe's work. So I guess that my life mission right now is to go deeper in me and to go find the divine and hopefully I find my North star within, you know, so cannot wait for that. Mm-hmm. Resonates yeah. a lot. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Beautiful. coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I don't know. I had a friend, she was doing something called like, it's like, it's like numerology or astrology, but it's, it's not even that it's completely different. And she was just like showing my predictions or something shit like that. And basically next year, I'm going to have like a business that's going to be, it's like meant for me, I guess you could say. So we'll see what happens next year. So I cannot wait to see if this goes out. I mean, I, I don't know how this is going to happen, but this is going to be the video that's going to be like, let's see if Andrew starts to create that business that he that's going to happen next year. So I don't even know. It's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Yeah, of course. And talking about this, I just read something yesterday that blew my mind and I wanted to share with you. I just yeah, had yeah. goosebumps all over my body and it's from the book Becoming from Azria and Benjamin Baker. I don't know if you know them. Uh, okay, I'm going to read that and maybe it's going to serve to the audience as well. Giving birth to ourselves. Almost all of us on the genuine path of becoming will find ourselves at some point torn between the old and the new world. This this is why the, that's why the embracing of death is such a crucial component to this work. The caterpillar can never evolve into the butterfly if it is unwilling to give up being the caterpillar and lets its previous, and lets its previous form completely dissolve. The thing is the caterpillar must be willing to do this without having any idea that it will become a butterfly. It will need to trust implicitly in the evolution poles of life intelligence working through it, to willingly face the chrysalis and go for such a rigorous initiation. Mm. Humans are no different. We must learn to trust the unknown again and again as life initiates us into becoming the truest expressions of ourselves. The cause for that is our identity, which is mostly constructed of false ideas of who we should be. The people in our lives, who are deeply attached to our identity because it validates their own identity might kick and scream and try to convince us that we are making a mistake by trusting so deeply something as vast, mysterious and volatile as life. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. What? That's yeah. from the book Becoming? Yeah. I'm I didn't get, I didn't read that too. shit. That sounds yeah. so fire. Yeah, I resonate like, with a lot. Yeah. I started like, 
to read. Oh, it's 11 11. Uh, I started to read. <laughs> <laughs> I started to read it like three days ago and I'm almost done. Like, pfft. yeah, becoming. I, I like yeah. that word. I mean, I like the title of the name. It's, I, I resonate with that a lot. I, I resonate with what you said, trusting in the unknown. Like, what? Yeah, that's beautiful. Trusting in the unknown and in yourself and just being like, this is so powerful that the fact that you are able that not to listen the people around you but just yourself right right it's such a proof of love for yourself because you trust in you and um, yeah so beautiful yeah and it beautiful what you just said because like building a relationship with yourself and building trust with yourself is just it goes it's it has it's such a beautiful thing because whenever you really develop that relationship with yourself it just shows that what you're like what how powerful you are as a person, like being able to be greater than your external environment and your body and time and just showing up for yourself. is just like, me, you're meeting the divine in love, right? Dr. Joe always said, meet me in love. Like Don, divine told Dr. Joe, meet me in love. And the more times you show up for yourself and build that relationship, you're just saying, I rather choose to meet the divine in love every single day. And that is, that's, I think that's what we also strive for. So yeah. Mm -hmm. so, beautiful thing. Yeah. And you said that you, oh, I hear me in echo, just one sec. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, you, you told me that you were uh, like studying Dr. Joe's work. Yeah. Like, how do you just, because you, you've already read the books and participate to the event. So how do you, studying it right now, do you participate to like his community lives or what do you do with his work today? Yeah, so I still I'm still learning it every single day because it's just that every time you go to one of these events, you learn new bits of piece of knowledge that you didn't catch before, and just like oh, I need to relearn this. Yeah, I gotta relearn this. It's really going back to the basics um, to just rewire everything again. Um, mm. Also, I don't really listen to the Dr. Yo live, but he does have like a youth live, which is like for free, mm. and it's just amazing. He gives us tons of advice on like how we should go about life and uh, or he inspires us to, um, he gives us the right information to go about life. And um, it's a beautiful thing because everyone connects really deeply. It's a beautiful thing. There's a telegram group for the youth. And it's just that we talk on there about a whole bunch of different things like breath work, uh, things we want to experience, places we want to go. Uh, we also have the youth uh, coherence healings where we get together. We talk about how we want to heal people. And mm. it's a beautiful thing, you know. And we meet, we get like new people almost every month now. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, so you you started, did you start to heal people on Zoom? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you started the, I remember, the, the remote healing. Okay. Yeah. I remember this one time, uh, it was back in San Diego. I just don't know why, but I, I was just like not feeling to do it. And I was just like, I'm just going to show up. I don't care. And I don't know why, but I just started crying uncontrollably, just crying like, like we have three sessions, we heal three people, uh, one time, next time, third time, whatever, right? And throughout that whole three sessions, I was just crying throughout the whole entire time. And one lady, uh, after the whole session was over, one lady comes out and she's like, I just want to say thank you guys. I was just crying through that whole entire session. And I was like, I was too. Like, it was just so fucking crazy to like, to see that, you know, how connected we all are. And I think that going mm -hmm. out with like no expectation, just being open-minded, it's like, relaxed and awake basically so you just got to go in like that relaxed and awake and yeah. uh yeah so it, it's crazy because you you show up and I guess like you try 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 and then when you finally give it up it's just like that's when it, it sneaks up on you like mm -hmm. you know tickles you but yeah yeah when yeah. you're healing people you are healing yourself as well yeah a hundred percent I was crying too man I was crying so oh, much my. and in Dallas as well it was so like powerful like what yeah like during my san diego uh the night when we were dancing on saturday i remember uh before then i had like this vision of my of a little girl and i knew like that was my daughter for some reason like whenever we were healing the person i had my hands over my heart and i just remember like this little girl just walks into my mind's eye i was just thinking like whoa what is this and i just picked up that's your daughter i was like no fucking way and yesterday too 
I was doing, I think it was synchronizing your energy to love. And I just seen like this little boy come into my bit, my eye. And I was thinking like, this can't be, this is interesting. I didn't get any feelings, but it was just like a little boy just popped up. And I was just thinking like, oh shit, this is interesting. So I don't know. It's very interesting. Cause like whenever you do these meditations, you will experience some crazy visions. I'll tell you that for sure. So. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah how how was your meditation game since San Diego did you did you start to have like more and more visions more and more mystical experiences uh I wasn't yeah actually they, I had some dark mystical experiences I they were just I mean like I guess it was just my subconscious trying to uh what is it it's trying to vent to me what's happening and what I what I would do, I would just react and get closed down because it would just be so scary. But then I would remember doctors just saying, just, you have to be open, be curious, mm -hmm. not judge it. And just like allow it to pass through no matter how it goes because it's the unknown, right? And I'm always talking about, let's go in the unknown, let's go in the unknown. And every time this shit happens, it's just like, this shit's way bigger than me. I'm just thinking, oh my God, <laughs> this is this shit is scary, dude. I don't know what to do. And I, I contract, I must admit, I contract. So it's still a work in progress. I still have moments where I'm just thinking like, oh, this is scary. But um, you just got to go, Pat, you just got to like be open-minded, be curious and just allow it to flow naturally. Cause I think that's just like information that's trying to pass through you. And when you just allow it to be present with it, with a compassionate heart and a courageous heart, you just allow it to be as it's supposed to be. And eventually it will just transmute itself into uh, energy. So, yeah. And the, the, the crazy thing is that all of this is within us. It's us yeah 100 percent. yeah i'm just like damn this is what i gotta deal with oh, okay these guys i thought i dealt with you last time you're coming back <laughs> even bigger huh damn now it's kidding but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, yeah it's definitely us that we gotta overcome it's just like layers and layers yeah. and layers and layers uh i just remember i had a friend who went to the marco island advanced follow uh he was telling me like he had like this crazy mystical experience where like this this being of white light with a sword like stabbed him in the heart and what happened was like this like demon came out of him like this he I guess like the demon that came out of him was like shame or guilt or something like that and like this being of light just stabbed it and it was just like he was saying that like the being of light was basically killing the demon or not killing or just neutralizing the demon that mm -hmm. was like shame that was stuck within him and so it just shows that like oh every time we do the meditation we're just overcoming these layers and aspects of ourselves that just no longer serves and you know i think that we're living in a time where you know consciousness is rising the vibration is getting higher and we got to purge this thing out as much as mother mother earth is doing as uh, doing it as well you know so oh, yeah. yeah oh yeah wow beautiful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so all these like situations and all that around the world's coming up mother earth is just saying like hey we got to purge this stuff out like we have to something new will emerge out of it so like Dr. Joe said, right? Something yeah. new would merge out of it. So yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It feels like we it's asking to to in some way clean ourselves. So to clean ourselves, like to go within and go to the unknown. Yeah, that that that's the thing. Like not a lot of people would wanna go within because it's it's uncomfortable right it's, uncomfortable. Nobody, it's scary yeah, yeah literally that and and most people in today's world what we struggle with is that we would like go on vacations go to external environments i mean go shopping drinking partying doing all these mm. things to socialize and not a lot of people want to go within you know and i feel like like by the time you're 30 40 years old that's whenever all those stuff comes up and you got to like handle that shit for sure you know yeah nothing wrong to socialize or anything like that it's just that like you're i don't want to say you're i guess you're in a sense addicted to those things if you're addicted to some type of emotional uh tendency that's going on within right of course yeah yeah so. they, they're putting their happiness in the hands of some external factors right mm -hmm. so exactly. instead of going within yeah yeah and like even for me too, for all your audience that's listening, um, even though I traveled to like different places and had like cool experience and stuff like that, there was just moments where I was just thinking like, oh, you know, like it, it subsided. Like as soon like the 
the short-term pleasure was there. Everything was just so euphoric, so cool and everything like that. But it would just like subside like crazy. And I was just thinking like, oh, it's back to normal, I guess you could say. And I guess that's whenever you have to change again, because I guess that when you, you create from that state, it shows up and you get to experience it but then at the same time you just got to keep evolving and just keep overcoming yourself because yeah. like yeah yeah mm-hmm. pretty cool pretty yeah cool stuff know, but yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> wow what a life man mm-hmm. and like we are creating this right it's just mm-hmm. like it's not yeah it is coming but because we are creating it we take the 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 action for it right yeah like you always have the choice right so just like yeah yeah you do have the choice to how however you want to respond into life or life's challenges no but they're 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 our greatest teachers so yeah oh yeah (laughs) always always a hundred percent so you you did two events yeah. and um like how was your how did you feel during the second event like did you feel that it was the same or different oh man the second event was way better than my first i must admit first event it was so hard for me to open my heart connected to the field i thought i understood dr joe's work but it took it to a whole nother level and then whenever i came to the dallas week long everything was just clicking i was just like oh okay like our goal is to reach oneness and wholeness, but what's standing in the way between getting to oneness and wholeness is like our beliefs, our emotional conditioning, our programming, our yeah. hardwired thinking patterns. And it's just that we got to overcome these aspects of ourselves because if it's not loving to us, that's what we need to remove. And um, yeah, the second event was just much more, everything was just puzzling itself together. It was much more getting more clarity. It, everything was just kick clicking beautifully and uh yeah 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 Yeah, for sure did you uh plan do you plan to to do another event hi i'm doing i'm working on this project right now i can't say which event i'm being called to but there's an event that's calling out to me and i'm actually recording a youtube video on it right now so nice can't i can't tell anyone because i gotta know if this is like if this shit actually works you know okay okay nice (laughs) but um I plan on volunteering in Australia in 2023. I'm predicting in Australia. It. I, yeah, Australia. Seriously, I'm, I, I'm I'm gonna manifest it. I don't know how it's gonna come, but I plan on manifesting it because I met this Australian lady in the Dallas week long, and I was just blown away by her state of being. Like the way she acted, the way she felt, the way she thought, it was just unbelievable. And mm. she's so funny. They cuss so much. She was like, you wanker. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, they're just so funny. And uh, yeah, like these guys, these guys are just unbelievable. They're just so intelligent, so brilliant. They're magnificent. Um, these guys are just, I, I would love to just, like surround myself with these guys. because They're just so funny and intelligent. So and it really inspired me to go to Australia to volunteer. So yeah, pretty cool. Gonna work, of course. 100%. Right. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> of yeah. <laughs> yeah universe (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh yeah for sure it's gonna work Mm -hmm. wow you plan on going to any other events too or no yeah absolutely oh yeah 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 Yeah, you got to i i i was telling myself um i'd love to go there at least two two times a a year at least two times yeah at least and mm-hmm. I was I would also love to volunteer at one. So maybe the next one I will see. I don't know where it's uh, gonna be, but um yeah, doing this as a volunteer can be a very cool experience. Do you are you gonna go to one of the advanced follow-ups too or no? I would love to try it. Like yeah. meditating between uh, 10 p.m. and uh, 8 a.m. is gonna Damn, wait, wait, yeah. Wait, that's what you guys do at the advanced follow-up? Uh, yeah, Dr. Joe told that last time. He was saying that uh they're meditating during the night oh fuck no i mean yeah, yeah i'll do it. i'll do it too but damn. yeah uh, yeah i'll do it too just because like the mystical hour it is so, yeah exactly exactly yeah, i gotta get that too yeah so cool mm-hmm. oh yeah i would love to mm-hmm. going deeper uh, in the teachings you know yeah of looking. course yeah and like now that i think about it like i i could have sworn the advanced follow-ups are just more of like us meditating and like 
not really that much uh, Dr. Gil lecturing at all. It's just more of us like meditating more. That's what I heard. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, for sure. Hope, yeah. Because I know Dr. Joe is going to be doing one in Dallas, actually, the event follow up in next year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what he said, I think. Mm. You know. Oh, yeah. good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how things go. Hmm. Um, what did I want to say? <laughs> <laughs> what I was gonna say it's so new for me because like every time you are speaking I'm like oh, I would love to, to 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 say that and to say that and then I forget because I'm I, my goal is to listen to you and to be present right so it's yeah, just it's like okay. it's new and it's uh it's funny like we have to play with this you know yeah we have to we have to have fun present. play with it mm -hmm. yeah um, you're doing good though you're doing really good thank so thank you yeah. it's so fun it's yeah so for sure i'm so happy to do it yeah <laughs> yeah just yeah. with practice and just with a lot of consistency it's gonna yeah. be beautiful so yeah Absolutely. i can see yeah i can see you like really elevating on this area for mm -hmm. sure so i have this negative thoughts coming to me where that's saying oh no you're not you're not going to do that video this is not for you you mm -hmm. have other things to do and like when I'm just here with you, I'm like, wow, I feel so good doing this. Yeah. Um, and I just realized that those thoughts are just like hardwired. Like, yeah, the old program that just want don't doesn't want you to evolve and to grow and to go to to your higher self, right? So it's just like I just overcame it and I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I'm through like that. That takes a courageous person to actually do that. When they become aware of that thought and they just make the decision, like, I'm not going to listen to this thought. I'm just going to keep going. Oh, yeah. I, I applaud you so much because that that's courageous. I don't I don't know who else does that. A lot of Dr. Joe Dispenza students, we all do that, but not a lot of, like, the 99% of the world, you know, they, they're, I guess, like, in a sense, they're, like, you know, we all get lost and stuff like that. But I that's proud of you being aware of that. So mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I don't have any more questions. So uh, it was a beautiful moment with you. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. Do, do you have any anything else to add that you would add to um, the audience? Yeah, so for your audience who are just interested in doing or haven't been to a week long, I would say that keep practicing the meditations, keep showing up. Uh, eventually things will work out better than you expected way better than you expected and so trust the small signs when you start to notice them experiment with them play with them have more fun with it honestly and whenever you're like in a meditation and you're like really frustrated and angry practice compassion and kindness towards yourself practice executing on the moment and yeah i think that that's the best um advice i can give you guys because i'm still on the journey too but um I hope like this video definitely gives you guys some type of value and yeah i hope you guys to i hope to see you guys in one of the week longs or advanced follow-ups yeah so, yeah yeah guys yeah of course <laughs> oh last question for you i have a lot of people that ask me like like how do you do, do you have any tips to give like to be to like succeed your meditation like do you just listen to the videos or do do you like yeah do but yeah do you have any tips just to succeed the meditation yeah because a lot of people are like oh i i don't know how to meditate uh mm -hmm. it's too long or i don't understand what he <laughs> says like space what does it mean like what i don't i'm lost yeah, so mm -hmm. I highly recommend getting the progressive and intensive. It goes so in depth. Um, uh, I'm not affiliated with Dr. Joe or anything like that, but I highly recommend it because I watch it every single day and I practice the meditations. And whenever you're like, you can't find like the present moment, listen to his voice, listen to the music. Like the music will naturally guide you into like the void and nothingness. And when you get deeper, like I, I still struggle with this too. Whenever I get deeper, I'd be like, oh, I'm getting too far away. And I come back and I'm just like, fuck. But so just 
keep listening to Dr. Joe's voice. Everything's in sync beautifully. Dr. Joe knows what he's doing. And um, the best tips I can guess, I guess you could say is just that uh, listen to the, listen to the instructions. Highly, mm -hmm. highly recommend listening to the instructions. It will just, it will just puzzle, puzzle things together. It will create more coherence in your brain, your heart, and you will have those profound uh, moments of just feeling euphoria and, uh, and ex elated, I guess you could say. So hope, yeah, I hope that helps out. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, thank sure. For the sure. response. Okay, amazing. So thank you so much, Andrew. And, uh, and thanks, guys, for uh, being with us. Okay, I'm ending the, this thing. Oh, no, it's you, huh? Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>